with that, Marion has. Proverbs 31, 10 through 12. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. 1 Kings 21 through 20, I'm sorry, 1 Kings 21 verse 25. But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. Good morning, everyone. Marion the Librarian here. We are reading through the Old Testament together as a church body. Last week we read 2 Samuel and 1 Kings, and we would love you to join us this week as we read 2 Kings and 1 Chronicles. 2 Kings and 1 Chronicles. Can you even imagine a worse thing to be said of a wife than which was said of Jezebel? That she stirred her husband up to do wickedness? Oh. In the Bible, God has several words for wives. The first word is helper. Genesis 2:18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Then we have submit. Ephesians 5:22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Then respect. Ephesians 5:33. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Then love, Titus 2, 4, that they, the older women, admonish the young women to love their husbands. Then obedient, Titus 2, 5, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Far from doing Ahab her husband good all the days of her life, like the Proverbs 31 wife, Jezebel's ungodly ways caused the Lord in 1 Kings 21, 29b to say, In the day of his, Ahab's, son, I will bring the calamity on his house. We have a great position of influence in our homes, fellow Christian wives. Let's make sure we are not stirring our husbands up to do wickedness but rather doing our husbands good and not evil all the days of our lives. Until next time, this is Marion the Librarian reminding you to read a book. And the best possible book is... Bye. That's right, folks. Bye now. Promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storm of death hear us By the living God of Ruth shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises I cannot fall Listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Standing Savior, stand there.
I'm standing on the promises of Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for today for your mercies are new every day for us. Thank you for the, the opportunity to, to do your will in our lives, Lord. Thank you for Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. We so appreciate what, what, you, what you've done. You gave it all. You didn't give it. You don't you didn't give it halfway, a third of the way. You gave it all. You gave your only begotten Son for us. And we thank you, appreciate, and we glorify your holy name for that. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, I really didn't think I was ever going to be st standing up here. Uh, I've... Uh, I had preached uh, on don't hang your head on uh, the phrase of once saved, always saved. The reason I say that, uh, especially today, uh, I, I've had a hard two weeks. You, you know, uh, you, you think that you worked it all out with the Lord and you're strong, you think you're strong you think you go through anything. Uh, there's things in my life that do, don't really bother me uh, if it happens to me. Because, you know, I've been through it. I've done it. Just life that happens to you. But there's something in everybody's life that God ha touches. And God knows how to get your attention. This last week was hard for me. My, mo my mom was in the hospital. It just a whole bunch of things all coming at one time. And for, for me to be in the hospital sick, dying, whatever, no big deal. I'm good with that. Uh, whenever you touch one of my loved ones, I get upset and I'm angry. I get angry. But this last week, I really got upset. I really, I really did get upset so much that uh, there at the hospital there's like a it's like a garden type deal a rock garden and I, and I went up out there and I just told the Lord either your word is true or it's not either your word is true or it's not I'm either going to believe it or I'm not but I believe that you are true but you know what what I see it's not and I said that out of frustration. And this last week, I, I, I called Pastor Miller and I told him about a lot of stuff. And he said something, do you want me to pray? I said, I don't, I don't want prayer. I don't, I don't want prayer. I want something more than prayer. What I actually was asking him, fix this. That's what I was actually asking. For him to fix it for me. I went home. And in Genesis 6.6. 6, I know we're reading through the Bible. But I went through Genesis 6.6. 6, and it said. In other translations. I am sorry that I made man. And it opened my eyes. And I got this. Ugly, ugly, ugly realization. That I just blasphemed God. I knew at that moment there was no coming back. I had the realization there was no coming back. There was nothing that I could say because I already had opened my mouth. And I just hung my head and I said, it was the most scariest feeling that I've ever felt in my whole life. And I'm 52 years old. That I, I don't have God anymore. I don't have Him. I, I don't feel Him. I don't have Him anymore. And I started worrying about that. At 1 o'clock in the morning, I just, I can't believe I just walked away from God. I just blasphemed God. 
And then all I said was, I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry doesn't help because every time I open my mouth and say sorry to people, they say, don't say you're sorry because sorry doesn't help. But I'm, I'm just saying I'm sorry. If I go to hell, it's my own choice now. And then a peace came upon me. It said, don't worry. Because you're worried about you walking away from me. That's just an indication that I'm still with you. I forgive you. But I do want you to listen to your elders. I want you to honor your mom and your father. I said, my father? I don't have a father. Your pastor is your father. Then I remembered that day, Pastor Miller said, go to the book of John and start reading it. Go to the book of John and start reading it. In my mind, why the book of John? You know, it's, I don't need to go to the book of John. But I opened up my iPad and I said, give me the book of John, King James Version. And it just, it, it started off a couple words. And then it started buffering and, it's, and it froze up. And I tried to boot it, boot it back up. Then I said, let me go to my, my truck and get my Bible. Lord said, no. I said, I thought you told me to listen to my father. I, he said, obedience is better than sacrifice. And he showed me to listen to Pastor Miller. Not because of Pastor Miller, because of the authority he put in my life. Whether I like it or I don't like it, listen to him and submit to authority. Do you know, Pastor Miller, I was, I was praying after that. And I wondered, you know, I was saying, well, Lord, you know, touch his knee, his knee, his knees, you know, always locks up. And, and, and I said, touch his knees. I said, you know why? His knees locks up and why it hurts? I said, no, Lord, I really don't. I think it's because of earlier injuries. Yeah, there's just a physical manifestation of what's really happening. The devil hates and the devil is fearful when he gets on his knees spiritually. Learn from him and even if you don't like it, submit to him and obey and I would bring you to your end in life and Pastor Miller how many how long have you known me it's been nearly 20 years how, how many times have I say thus said the Lord none The Lord says, you're going to run your race strong. You, 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 you can feel it strong. You will hear, well done, thy faithful servant. You're going to finish strong, not weak, but strong. Sister Mary, the Lord says I gave you the gift of healing but not just of physical healing but I gave you the gift of restoration for families you know it's the most scariest thing in this whole wide world now I, I have a taste of hell Whenever you get frustrated and angry at God, you're in danger of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And we need to find out that we can go to the deep end and fall off the edge. But I will never, I will never, I never want to feel that ugly feeling again. That was the most ugliest feeling I ever had in my whole life knowing that God wasn't going to be with me. And I knew that there was no coming back. I knew that there was no coming back. And whenever I woke up the next morning and I knew that that peace that passes all understanding came back in my life, I said, Lord, if I make 
whenever I make the decisions and I listen to your word, I'm always going to have peace, ain't I? No, sir. My son was doing my will in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was not in peace. Sometimes it's going to be hard and you're not going to feel me, but I'm going to be there. And I thank the Lord that he gave me one opportunity. And to think, if you, if you ever had, a, if God, pray not, but if God ever let you experience that, it's the most hellish experience that you can, being in hell, I don't think it's going to be much worse. Whenever you know that, that you had offended God and he, he's not with you anymore. Pastor Miller told a story about one time he said, he said something and he made a mistake when he was preaching and the Spirit of God left him. And he told the guy, tell the people I made a mistake. And the guy said, no, 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 we can't do that. We, 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 we can't do that. We, they're not going to believe us anymore. They're not gonna, we can't do that. He said, tell them because I need the Lord back in my life. I need the Holy Spirit. Be careful whenever you get into your moments of frustration because if you think that you won't reach that, everybody has their weak points. Everybody has their weak points. And you can get to the point of frustration and even start yelling at God and saying, where are you? Are you really real? But I always like what he told John the Baptist, whenever John the Baptist was locked up for doing his will, he said, blessed is he who's not offended in me. There's a special blessing whenever you, don't, you, you do not get offended, offended in God and don't question his actions or his lack of working in your life. Because everybody here has the ability to get to the point to say, God, where are you? I thought you were real. I thought, why aren't you doing what I need you to do? Be very careful. I don't know how to express it to you. It scared me to death. I did. It, it's beyond scared to know to get up from my bed and not look to look to left to the right. N no more God. No more Holy Spirit. It. It rocks you, it, 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 it lets you know that God is not to be played with at all. God is not to be played with. God is not to be mocked. God is not to be blasphemed. And God is not to be questioned. He will have mercy on who he shall have mercy. Blessed be the name of God. Whatever he wants to do, he is the Lord of all. Before you, he was, and he always will be. Everybody here has a calling. Try not to get frustrated with the Lord. But if you haven't reached that point, like my mom says, if you haven't ever lived the heart, you know, lived through anything hard, get ready, it's coming. It, it's not if, it's when it's going to come. The time that that you might get frustrated with God. You can be confused about what you're going to be confused about. That's okay. You can be questioning what you're going to be questioning, but never question God. Love Him. Thank you so much, and uh, be careful with the Lord. That was because of a, uh, an accident that I had when I was uh, 19 years old, uh, in my uh, in my drinking days, in my crazy days, but. Uh, I got them all, uh, my front four teeth uh, uh, knocked out in a, in a wreck. And it's been 20 years that I've been waiting, not knowing that I've been waiting, but for the Lord to bless me in, the, in this time and this walk in my life with, uh, uh, with a set of teeth. I know it may not be a big deal to some people, but I'm just so overjoyed because when I found my identity in Christ, I didn't, I didn't need my teeth. I, I didn't need my appearance to make me something that God already had made me. But now, having my teeth, I'm so overjoyed that 
I just don't have words to, to explain it. I'm still the same person. I'm still everything like that, but just the little things that God does for us Amen. to show that Amen. He loves us. Yes. And it could be uh, monetary things, literal things, or it could be blessings in heaven and, and, and blessings that, that He gives us. But I'm just so overjoyed and blessed that, uh, that I'm able to be up here uh, speaking the Word of God with a different appearance. And I just want to uh, share with uh, uh, Sister Anita, like 10 years ago, uh, she prophesied this to me. Whenever I was laying in her and Brother Jose's trailer floor with both of my kids, all, all, all four, uh, three of my kids, just gotten out of jail with the DWI, going through a divorce, lost my house, was homeless, no money in the bank account, no money, no nothing. I was hopeless, as you could say, on his floor, not knowing what I was going to do, not knowing what was going to happen. And she spoke this to me. Don't worry. Even then, not, not knowing me, not knowing my situation, that you're gonna, you're, don't worry, the Lord is going to raise up somebody to help you get your teeth fixed because you're going to be ministering the Word of God and you need to have them fixed. And I was like, the guy y'all just bailed out of jail, sleeping on your, on your living room floor with your kids because of my addictions, because of my selfishness, that I put my kids through. You're telling me that I'm going to speak the word of God to people with a different appearance. Amen. When I've gone 10 years already, nobody since that accident, nobody has ever told me what happened to your teeth. Do you want help fixing them? What's going on? No, none of that. Everybody just thought I was a, 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 a meth addict. That's what people thought, why I lost my teeth. I never explained to you. Nobody ever asked. So I never explained what happened. That's just what People thought that, that I was a meth addict and that I was this, this person, whatever, whatever the world thought that I was. But God said different and I'm just so, uh, uh, so grateful and, uh, and overjoyed right now just to, uh, I just want to glorify God and everything. I just want to smile and smile and smile and smile. But, amen. Okay. Back to the, the good stuff, the real stuff. Okay, uh, I know we've been reading in, uh, uh, in First Kings and... Uh, what the Lord has put on my heart is, is just that, uh, our hearts. And to, for something to stick out to me was uh, to guard our hearts. Because that is where, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's where everything that we do comes from our hearts. Our emotions, feelings, all that comes from our hearts. And when that takes place, then that's put into action. Sometimes it's sin, sometimes it's a blessing. But we, can, we control that if we allow to God to work in our lives for that, uh, uh, for that, for that matter, on what He's called us to do. So, uh, in First uh, First Kings, I'm going to be reading out of uh, First Kings eight fifty four through sixty one. It's where I'm going to get uh, uh, my reading from. Excuse me. Okay, and uh, 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 Pastor Miller, will you uh, open us up in prayer, sir? Father, we love you. And yes, thank Lord. You. Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit, for uh, touching in this congregation mm -hmm. this morning, mm -hmm. for revealing yourself, mm -hmm. for giving us your word. Now, Lord, we, we look forward to hearing your word mm -hmm. uh, read and preached. Lord, we, we look forward to seeing the results of that. Yes, Jesus Lord. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. God is good. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna read eight uh, eight fifty four through sixty one, and then I'm gonna go back and kind of uh, kind of get into it with the uh, with the context. Uh, before I start, uh, for those of you who are following, uh, you know, we know where, where we're at, and this is and in eight. Uh, this is the uh, where they just finished uh, uh, the temple, the altar uh, for the Lord that uh, that Solomon is uh, uh, is building, and now uh, Solomon is king. This is a very important to me. It stuck out because at the end of Solomon, there's a turning point. What happens in the uh, in the kings and in the uh, uh, in the tribes of Israel and Judah and Egypt and all that area? There's a uh, almost like a, a downfall because of something that that King Solomon uh, that King Solomon does. But uh, in 854 to 61, it says, And so it was, when Solomon had finished praying all this prayer and supplication to the Lord, 
that he arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven then he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice saying blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people according to all that he promised there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised through his servant Moses may the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers may he not leave us nor forsake us that he may incline our ears to himself to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his and his judgments which he commands our which he commanded our fathers and may these words of mine which with which I have made supplication before the Lord be near the Lord our God day and night that he may maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel as each day may require that all the people of the earth may know that Lord is God there is no other let your heart therefore be loyal to the Lord our God to walk in his statutes and keep his commandments as this day amen Uh, okay, uh, just in that, and, and again, uh, speaking, uh, Solomon is uh, is speaking this to the to those that have assembled to the uh, to the altar dedication and, and things like that. And before this, he prays a prayer to the Lord, asking him what he would want the Lord to uh, uh, to bless and to do in that in, the, in that manner. So I'm going to go to uh, just elaborate on. Uh, excuse me. On verse uh, 8, uh, uh, 58, and 8.58 says uh, that he may incline our hearts to himself. That the Lord prepares our hearts to be inclined to him in what he, in, in, in what he does. He prepares that way for us to, uh, to have our hearts shaped and molded for conviction and whatever we're going to, to, come, to come to him for what, we, uh, uh, for what he has for us. And in this case... Solomon is praying because he's going, they're dedicating this temple, which the temple wasn't there with all the sacrifices. And now he's trying to bring back the peace and unity from all of the surrounding areas that may have been uh, a stumbling block for King David not to build the altar. Because there wasn't an altar as King David, he tried to, but opposition from everybody else that was around would not let that happen. Because when they start, there was always an opposition, Some, something coming, something coming to attack the vision that the Lord had given, uh, has get, had gave David to build the altar. Just like in life with us right now, we get visions that the Lord gives us and something comes to attack. The evil one will throw something to, to be a stumbling block to us, to, to detour us for what he's called us to do uh, uh, in, our, uh, in our lives. And in that, that he may, that who, who may, that the Lord may incline our hearts to himself to walk in his ways. Brother Ted said something earlier uh, in, in men's group that uh, like in the book of Proverbs there's always there's, there's, there's good and bad do this and this will happen if you do this if then or this that, that's how it goes so in this he's telling us that the Lord may incline our, our, our hearts to himself but for what? to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments which he commanded our fathers so these are commandments that he already commanded us to do that was their season. This is our season now to follow these same commandments in what, in, what is, in what is going on in our lives. In the building, yes, this is a literal temple that they're building, but how are we building our temples for the Lord as an altar to God? Are we sacrificing the sacrifices or are we, are we just doing, uh, uh, like, like JR said earlier, are we just, uh, our, our offerings and sacrifices are not dedicated to God? We're doing them because, okay, if I know if I do this, I'm going to get this with a good intention. But our heart is not in the right place. Our heart is not seeking to glorify God for what He's doing. And and in this in this, I don't want to get too far ahead. But then we go to uh, to verse uh, sixty, where it says that all people of the earth may know that the Lord is God, that there is no other. So then He says, "Let your heart, therefore, be loyal to God." Guard your heart. We have to guard our heart because that's where everything. That's why it's continually. It's a heart thing. Lord, uh, 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 guard my heart. Put a hedge of protection around me. Because we can think all these things. 
and our mind are just thoughts. But when it comes from your heart, that's when that sin is born. That's when, that's when all of that, that again, the abundance, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what, what, what do we have in our heart? What are, what are we, not just speaking, but what are we carrying out? How are we acting towards people? How are we portraying our Christ-like attributes if we don't have a heart change? When we came to Christ, if that wasn't evident that I have issues. I have a lot of things wrong with me, Lord, but you have to remove them. You have to take that and you have to give me a new heart. You have to give me a new mind. Like in 2 Corinthians 5.17, we become a new creation. All things are made new. Beginning with our heart. Our heart should be the first thing that should change to humble us to love people at all costs. No matter what. And the only way we can love everybody at all costs if we're guarding our heart and filling it with the word of God. Who are we filling? Are we filling our flesh or are we filling our spirit man? And our spirit man is our heart. Because that's something that is tied to us. That gives us conviction. That gives us hope. That gives us uh, comfort. That gives us peace. Everything that the Holy Spirit gives us. We have to receive it to be able to give it. It's there, but if I don't receive it and carry it in my heart, then how can I be loving towards, towards somebody? I can do it with, with service and with deeds and all of that, but the Lord knows our hearts, and He's going to search our hearts, whether we like it or not. And when we go through things, if we allow to see the growth, or we allow to see what God is doing for us, is a blessing. Because it's all from God. And he, we know that He works all things out for the good for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. Called according to His purpose. <laughs> Forgive me. But God is so good that he, that he allows us to go through these things and have certain circumstances, situations in our lives that we can go to Him so that our hearts are loyal before the, before the Lord. So that we can walk in the statutes and keep His commandments as it is this day for today. I don't know if I'm going to do it tomorrow. We don't know. We can't, we can't go that far. But today is sufficient for today. Let's glorify God and what He is for today. That, that He works in all this situation. And one way that the Lord, uh, that the Lord uh, may incline our hearts to Himself. Is for, is for Him to incline our hearts to Him. So He's doing something. But it takes us to give it to Him. Like we sang that song earlier. Go to God through everything in prayer. So no matter what it is, we're going to God so that He can incline our hearts to Him. Lord, I want You to search my heart. Like Josh said in the, uh, in the, the communion, You search our hearts, Lord, not me. I'm not going to judge myself. You're going to do it. And if I'm obedient and I love the Lord, then I'm going to follow with what You say. I'm going to obedient, be obedient to what You tell me to do. And if that's to follow my pastor and his vision, that's what I'm going to do. If that's to follow my elders and, and, and their visions, that's what I'm going to do. If that's to follow the lowest, the lowest one, somebody who comes in here and help my brother, then that's what I'm going to do. But it's going to be from God. And it's going to be what He wants me to do if I'm asking, Lord, incline my heart to You, Father God. Search my heart. Let, let, me, let me search You like just like Solomon, like, uh, like David did. And I'm going to go into, in, uh, uh, if we go back a little bit further, in 1 Kings 3, 9, the Lord appeared to Solomon twice. In the, in the beginning of Kings, he appears to him and asks him, uh, like, not, not a wish, but like, what do you want? He asked Solomon. And, and, Solomon, and tell, Solomon tells him, he asks, therefore, give your servant an, an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil for who is able to judge great pe judge this great people of yours let's go. so that's why we spoke in men's group it's all uh, uh, God is so good that he allows not even knowing for everything to fall into into uh, into order and for his perfect will because we spread earlier that we see the good and evil we know what good and evil is but we have to wait till it's pointed out to us to do something about it. Or we have to wait till something is, is done that we have to, oh, well that's a bad thing to do. When if we're in the Word of God, conviction of the Holy Spirit should tell us what is wrong and what is right. We should already know. We shouldn't have to pray to God, God, let me know if this is right or, or, or wrong or is it, is it of you. If we're in connection with God, He should be speaking to us. He should be speaking to us constantly, telling us, uh, convicting us, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong, this is right. I should be like, the, the angels are shows with the angels on your shoulders looking this way, looking that way, looking this way, looking that way. 
I don't want to look this way no more. I want to look this way to what God says. If it's to keep going right, then I want to keep going right. Even if, it's, even if I see a, a, a potholes and something that's going to make me stumble, but I know that you have a greater picture. You have a greater vision, Lord, for your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are higher than mine. Right. And that's what I want to follow. I want to follow what you have for me, God. I want you to help me guard my heart. Guard your heart, church, because again, and I'm, I can't stress that enough because in the heart comes emotions, feelings, all these other things that just like we spoke about in men's group, that give us a, a covetous hearts, that give us prideful natures, that give us anger, bitterness, all of these things that go against God come from the heart. But if we're not filling it with good, peace, joy of the Holy Spirit to, to, to push down all of that bad, that bad, the, the Lord will, will, will drown all of that out if you allow Him to. If you guard your heart with the Word of God. Go. Not with material things. Not with, uh, with all this other stuff that the world says. You have a good heart. Because of this. You have a good, a good personality. You're a good person because of this. No. I want, at the end of the day, I want to hear from the Lord and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Not, not just when I go home in heaven, Amen. but every day I want to hear that because I was obedient to what God told me to do that day because I'm not promised tomorrow. I'm not promised an hour when I leave here. So if I get this chance to glorify God right now, and just like it says, let your heart therefore be loyal to the Lord our God to walk in His statutes and keep His commandments as at this day. Yes. As at this day for today. Let's glorify God for today and what He has for us to be doing today. In, 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 in everything that we do, from the little to the big, go to God in prayer. Ask Him what, he should, uh, ask him what you should be doing in your life. Just as, as, as Solomon asked the Lord what he wanted. Well, he wanted to understand to deal with the people. Well, Lord, whatever you're going through, like Jar said, whatever situation, whatever frustration it is, go to God. And ask Him to give you what you need to go through this. Amen. Ask Him to give you what you need not to uh, not to judge his people but to to bring his people closer to you Come on. in a loving manner because that's what some of us are put here to do in positions of authority that comes from the top to the bottom submission submit obedience and all of and all of this is obedience and it's not obedience to, to man it's obedience to God and what he's called me to do what he's called each and every one of us to do for him and to glorify the kingdom Right. Obedience, obedience to guard your heart. Do you want to? It, it's everything is obedience, because it starts with us. If we don't stand up and do what God's called us to do, then we're not being obedient. How can I be obedient in other areas of my life and not to what God has called me to do? Well, we can, but it won't prosper. It won't flourish. It's just going to be what it is, and then it's going to go away. But if we do it because the Lord has put that in our heart, and we do it according to His will and purpose for our lives. Then it's going to stand. Just like the Word of God is going to stand. Because that's what it's going to be based on. The Word of God. It's not going to be based on Rudy. Or some things that I conjured up. To get you to do this. The Word of God is going to stay. Fire. Because it's going to be put in your heart. And you're going to guard it by reading His Word. To keep it there. So that no matter what comes around. No matter what situation you're faced with. It's not going to knock you down. Amen. You're going to be able to have comfort. Peace and joy. Everything that this book promises we're going to have. And if it don't happen now, God is not a liar. He's going to bring it to pass. Even if it takes 20 years. Amen. <laughs> 20 years. It came, to, it came, it came to pass. I didn't, uh, I didn't know. I had no idea. For what the money for the cost, the money that went through my hands, I could have easily went to a dentist and got that. But I was blinded so much by Satan. He knew that he used my identity and my personal experience my personal uh, look to depress me to oppress me to keep me down from glorifying his name but whenever he couldn't do that anymore even without my teeth I'm gonna glorify my God That's right. whenever I was about my father's business he turned around and started being about my business Woo! So that's what we have to do. When you're about your father's business, he turns around and he's going to be about your business right. and work in your life for the, for the good. For what, you, for what you know you need removed from your life to make you be that man or woman of God that you need to be. To be filled with the Spirit and to go and walk and preach the gospel like he's called us to do.
Thank you. Amen. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. And the second time that uh, as, as we're going through all this, uh, Solomon is still here, uh, blessing and, and, and the temple, the altar for the Lord, all of that. Uh, and further on in, uh, in 9, he appears the second time. And uh, he tells him that he has heard his prayer and supplication, uh, and he's pleased with him with all he has done. In, in this time, in the kings were the King Solomon was almost like a, a spiritual representative to the people. These kings were used as an intercessor to God. They still had the power to, to, to speak to God on their own, but they were focused on, we have, we have a king now. We go to him, we go to these people, and they make the intercession to God for us. They do that for us. So that's who Solomon was for the people. And as he did that, uh, the Lord heard his. Uh, the Lord did hear his, hear, hear his prayers, and in nine uh, four through five it says, "Now if you, now if, catch that if. Again, guard your hearts. Now if you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity of heart, and in uprightness. Before I keep going, I want to stop right there. We all know David. We all know the things that he did." But look at what God still tells him, what still tells Solomon. If you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity of heart, it wasn't because the actions or things that David did that removed him from God or brought him closer to God. It was because his heart was after God. His heart was seeking after the righteousness and what God wanted him to be. That's where, that's where that came from. It wasn't because he won all these wars or uh, won all these battles and brought all this, brought all this uh, uh, glory uh, uh, to the... Uh, to his area and all the tribes and everything that he had. It wasn't in need of that. Yes, the Lord was pleased because he went before him and allowed him to gain victory in them instances. But he knew David's heart. He knew what was in there and that he wanted to glorify God so much and do his will that he was willing to do whatever God asked him to do. Even not take vengeance on, on Saul whenever that was happening. So he prepared David's heart to go through all these things, to be king, to go through all this stuff that he went through as his father did so that Solomon could come and take, and take the throne to continue what David, uh, uh, what David was doing. So as I continue, David walked in integrity of heart and in upright, uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded you. And if you keep my statutes and judgments, then... I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever. As I promised David your father saying, You shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. In this, again, because Solomon was told, This is what you have to do. You have to, you have, you have to seek me. You have to follow my ways. You have to do what I ask you to do. And if you do, I'm going to do this for you. It's going to be a blessing for you in the kingdom and those that and those that follow. All that is going to be a blessing. But if you uh, if you don't, I'm just going to read it. But if you or your sons at all turn from following me and do not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have said before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land which I have given them. I'm just going to stop right there. He will cut it off. Amen. He will eliminate it, remove it, take it out of here. Yeah. Doesn't want nothing to do with it. Because of what? Sin. Because of sin and they didn't follow his statutes or commandments. If we, if we look at our lives today, how many times do we fall short in sin and not, and not do what God called us to do? Woo, come on now. Look at what they went through back in that time. That if something like that happened, it was a quick... Go. There was action taken when something was done. It wasn't prolonged and oh well, well maybe if it happens again we'll deal with it then. No, they took quick action and swift and had a reverence for the word of God and for what that word said. Most of them, the, the, uh, the Pharisees and everybody, they turned it to be what man wanted it to be. But there was still people who had a reverence for God and what the word wanted, what the Lord wanted to get across through his kings, through the prophets, through all those that he said before them. And like we know the word of God says, the word will not go, come back void. So in that, it's speaking to, it's speaking to them in that, 
in that, uh, in that manner. And, in, and, and through all of this, God promised Solomon this, uh, this, this legacy and all of that. All these good things, but it required his obedience to God. As in us, the Lord wants to give us these, these things. The Lord wants to bless us and wants to work and move in our lives. But it takes obedience from us. It takes obedience from us to stay in his word and, and, to, and to live our lives according to what he's called us to do. No, we're not perfect. No, we're not going to get it right all the time. But there's we're, we're forgiveness, repentance. But we have to go to him to receive that. We can't just do, do things and know that, oh, well, I have grace, mercy, repentance, forgiveness. I have all of them things. So I'm going to continue to do what I, whatever I want to do. No, we can't do that. Well, you can. But again, the Lord knows your heart. So guard it. If you're going to guard it with wicked things, what does the Bible say? The wages of sin is death. All that wickedness that you put in your heart is not going to bring you anything good. Yeah, you may, like we said it today in men's group, yeah, people that are wicked, they may look like they prosper, they have big houses and there's a bunch of money and all of that stuff. But like Brother Ted said, you get all that money, you do all that, when you stop serving that, that idol, when you stop serving that, that, that thing, you become void because you don't know what else to do now. So you get depressed, you get suicidal, you get all of these things because you're lacking. You're lacking something that needs to be filled. And only the Word of God can fill that. Only the power of the Holy Spirit can fill that void. Even though you worked all these years, whatever, that, that, that doesn't matter if you don't have Christ. None of that matters if you don't have Christ. That you have something to fall back on when you are depressed, when you are down, when you are going through, through situation, circumstance in your life that seems hopeless, that seems like you can't reach it, like you can't overcome it. But he allows us to be an overcomer. That's right. The victory has already been won. He's already paid the price when he hung on Calvary's cross. Mm -hmm. What more do we need for him to do for us? Nothing. But obey him. That's what we should be doing. Is obeying him. And whatever you want Lord. That's what I want to do. And at the same right. time. I want you to search my heart. That when I get out of line. You put me back in line. To follow your will and your ways Father God. Amen. Because. That's what I want to do. And I know that's going to glorify your name. No matter what else I do, if I'm obedient to you, I know because your word says, if I do this, you will be pleased. So that's what I want to do. I want to do this part so that, I, so that he can be pleased. Because it's not about serving. And it, when he's, he's pleased, his people will be pleased. Because it's from God. They'll be receiving. All of that will fall in, in line. But when I get out of his will for what he wants me to do and wants me to speak, then I become a stumbling block for others. I pull that, that Jenga piece that can make everything fall. Mm. But I take a chance every day when I wake up, okay, what piece am I going to pull? What strings am I going to pull today? Am I going to edify or am I going to tear down? What am I going to do today? Where is my heart at when I get up in the morning? Is my heart for Christ to pray on my knees when I first get up and give everything to God even though I just woke up? I haven't faced nothing in life yet. I'm just getting out of bed. But I'm giving you my heart, Lord. Work in it right now so that prepare me so when I, when I take my first step, your thoughts are coming into my mind. My heart, I want my heart clear, pure, early in the morning, in your word, in your presence. So when you speak, I know it's you Glory. in this morning. So that I can go forth and do what you've called me to do, Lord. Speak what you've called me to speak and go where you've called me to go. Only because your power of your Holy Spirit can lead me to do that, Father God. Right. Only that you put that in my heart to do that, Father God, from early in the morning throughout this day. Because without you, I am nothing. Amen. And we have to allow him to do that for us so that we can. That doesn't mean that our day is going to be perfect. We may still go through stuff, but we've already gotten off on the right foot because we're giving it to God. I don't know what I'm going to go through today, God, but you know. Go perform me, clean it up, get that broom, make the path straight for me, Father God, so I can continue to walk. And if there's something that's in the way that can't be removed right now, well, you tell me to wait and stop. And get into my word and ask for my next instruction. What do I do next, Lord? I'm here. I'm, I'm getting frustrated. I'm doing all of this. But what is my next? What is my next move? And we'll find that if you ask and get into His word, He'll tell you. It may not be sometimes what you want to hear, but if you know God's voice, you better obey that voice and do it. If not, there's consequences to every action, good and bad, 50-50. No, maybe, and no, good or bad. We have free will to choose that. Us, in the flesh. When you're led by the Spirit, you don't have that free will anymore. Because that free will is now 
occupied by the Holy Spirit. And that's who's going to speak for you. That's who's going to walk for you. If you allow Him to come into you and guide your day that way. But if you don't, oh God, thank you for today. Help me, guide me, lead me. Okay. That's a prayer, yes. I'm not, I'm not saying anything about that. But as you grow and you mature, you want a deeper relationship with Christ. Right. You don't just want it to be, oh Lord, thank you, praise you, oh, that's it. Yes, less in the Word and everything. But sometimes when you've gotten to that point where you want to just sit there and just talk to God, it's more than just a minute. It's more than just a couple of words because I want to get intimate with you, God. I want to be one with you so that you fill me so I can do what you called me to do. Now I can't do that by saying, hi, bye, Lord. I say, oh, I see you over there, God. You're doing good. Thank you. No, I've got to intentionally set aside time to be obedient, to not be selfish, and take that out of, out of, out of Rudy's day to give it to God. It's the least I can do for what he did for me. It's the least that I can do for what, for what he did for me. So in, uh, in, in that, all of this, uh, the obedience and everything that, uh, that, that Solomon was, uh, was doing was, was all great to God. He was guarding his heart. He was doing all of that. But, like I say, this is where the, the things change. Because in, we go a little bit further into, uh, into 11, and the Lord had already spoken to Solomon and told him not to intermarry with the, with the foreigners. If he did, you shall not intermarry. Okay, this is 11, uh, 11 2. From the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, You shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after other gods. Amen. Turn away your hearts. That's just intermarry with women. Fill in the blank. Money, work, whatever it is that's going to turn your heart away from God. Apply that. Apply this. And I'm going back and forth to from what Solomon is saying to how we can apply it to our lives. Because that's what we're... When you read the Word of God, He's going to speak to you on what's going on with you in, in your lives. We're not reading it as a book just to read it. We're reading it as... An application of the Holy Spirit to speak to us. So how can I put this into my life? How can I learn from my fathers? How can I learn from those that were before me? And what they did. And how they, and God was glorified. And how God moved in their lives. Because I want to do that. I want to do what this word says. That these mighty men of God did. Even though they weren't perfect. They had many flaws. Some more than I did. And me more than them. But God still used them. Because he knew their heart. And he knew that their heart was a teachable heart and a willing heart to be that vessel that he called them to be. So we have to, we have, to have that willing heart to be used. If, if not, then we're, we're going to be used on our own accord on what we think can make happen. And we can always make something happen. I can always make, go out and make something happen for God. But I don't want it to be of me. I want it to be that he set before my path, put something in my mind, put it in my heart, so then I can accomplish it. So that it's all through the will of the Father. That's right. Nothing to Rudy. From the top to the bottom, the will of the Father going out to do what He's called us to do. So in, in that, whenever, whenever Solomon takes all of them wives, that's when he stopped being obedient. That's when he broke that covenant with God and started taking after other gods. Not the one true God who delivered and did all these things for David, for Saul, all these other great works that he already did. He went somewhere else because of an idol because the evil one used just this Jezebel spirits to entice him to go this way, to go after other gods. As the evil one uses things in our lives now to entice us to go after idolatry towards other things, uh, money, work, cars, uh, fill in the blank. But that's where it starts. Whenever we fall out of the will of God, things start to happen. And if it, it doesn't all happen at the, at the same time. But if you go through the, uh, the book of Kings, it still keep going. Now there's a division after this, after uh, all that happens and, and Solomon is getting to the end of his reign. The next kings that are coming up, they've got a struggle now because of what their fathers did, because of what King Solomon did. Now they've got a bunch of stumbling blocks in front of them that they've got to overcome, that they've got to get back to, and they don't do it. Most of them don't do it because their heart was not after God the way David's was. They were after material things, uh, buildings and doing all of these other great things for, uh, for people and for what they thought the people wanted. But Solomon, like it says, he was a spiritual 
intercessor for these people. He, he, was, he, was, he was a man like David after God's own heart. That's where it has to start. Whoever, for whoever is in, for whoever is in, uh, in authority or in a, uh, in, a, in a position to oversee others, as, as Pastor Miller is, his heart's got to be in the right place to be able to shepherd a flock. As my heart's got to be in the right place to be able to minister the Word of God. As Brother Ted's heart's got to be in the right place when he gives Bible study. Because that's what the Lord calls us to do. Right. Is to be, to have a clear heart so that, he, so that we can allow the Holy Spirit to use us and, and, to, and to speak to others, to speak His Word. Not our words on what, on what He has, but what the Lord is going to use us to be and to do if we allow Him to, for Him to incline our hearts to Him. How awesome is that? That even though He knows our beginning to our end, yeah. God can do that. He can say, your heart's clean. No more pride. No more this. Your heart's clean. No more bitterness. No more any of that. You, all that you deal with, depression, all that, gone. But what would the world be with that? Would, would we have a Savior? Would we have a comforter? <laughs> would we have a peace and joy that, that, uh, that goes beyond all understanding? If we knew that whatever situation could be done with the snap of a finger? Absolutely not. God knows us and He knows what we're going to do, what we're going to say. He knows our hearts already. So we can't hide, we can't lie, we can't do, we, we may think we're getting away with things. That's right. But He knows and He's going to search and convict and do, all, and, and do all the things because He's God. Because He wants us. He, if, we're, if we're predestined, we believe all these promises that the Word of God says to us, then why wouldn't believe that that he's going to do this for us. Well, I wouldn't believe that he's going to change our hearts and give us a new, a new way of thinking, a new way of acting, a new way of loving people, a new way of going about our father's business instead of our business in our lives. So in everything from all of this, Lord, uh, I thank you, Father God, for all that you are and all that you do. I just ask you to continue to, uh, to be with us, Lord. And you just guard our hearts, Father God. You guard them already, Father God, because you know our heart, Father God, and they're wicked, Lord. We cannot have them cleaned and purified, Father God, unless we come to you, Lord, in these times. These times of struggle, these times of frustration, these times of oppression, depression, whatever it is, Father God. And even in the times of glory and praise, Lord, we want to come to you, Father God, because we know you are the author of our lives. You are everything, Father God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this day. Guard our hearts for today, Lord. Let us seek you for, for the things you would have us be doing, Lord. And remove the things that are not of you, Father God, and the things that we shouldn't be doing. Start taking them from us, Father God, so we can, so we can grow and glorify the kingdom, Father God. To glorify your name and what you call called us to do. We love you, Lord, and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.